right. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to pick up working on Deploy the Fleet. Now, what are we going to work on tonight? Well, let me show you. Whoa. Okay, let's go to deploythefleet.io and we'll log in. <clears throat> Hope everybody's doing well. Kind of getting kind of crazy, at least here in the States last week or so. COVID's kind of making a roaring comeback. So if you're watching this or you see this, I hope you're doing well. Hope you're staying healthy and you and your loved ones are, are safe and, and doing well. Sending good vibes your way. All right. So what are we working on tonight? Well, one of the things that I want to change before we launch and specifically, so something that I'm having to think a lot about, and this is not something that you have to think about when you're just making personal projects or weekend projects, but when you're trying to actually put something together as a service for other people to use is first of all, the documentation. And so as I was going through and making the documentation that you see here, you know, just even things like this, when you take screenshots, if you change anything drastically after you take the screenshot, you got to go back through and take new screenshots, update the website. And there's just a lot of the more infrastructure that you build around your idea and your project and documentation and examples. As soon as you start to change things, um, again, if they're big changes, even if they're small changes, if they're specific to how you've laid out certain documentation and things, you have to go, you have to go back and recreate all that stuff. And so that's something that I'm trying to get it as close to launch as possible before I start to really put a lot of effort into the polish of, um, you know, writing more examples, writing more documentation. Because once I do that, uh, it's not that it's fragile. It's just that you've built so much that you have to keep uh, updated. So um, the other part of that is the videos that I want to make for people to get started. So I'm going to make videos showing how you get started. And um, I don't want to have to reshoot all those because I decide I want to change something. So I think we're just about there. And we've just about um, gotten into like a, a calm, steady state of we'll just add features going forward. And it shouldn't require a lot of documentation. But one of the things I want to do absolutely before I release, and this is a huge one, is this update URL right here that gets created automatically for you when you create a product. And uh, I want to change the form of it. So right now it's HTTPS app.deploythefleet.io slash API slash OTA slash a custom identifier. And it's a little long, not prohibitively, um, especially on the kind of devices that would be able to do over the air updates like this. Um, so it's, it's a little long and I also don't like how busy it is. Like I've got app dot. So I'm on the subdomain, excuse me. <clears throat> and then I do slash API slash OTA. There's just a lot going on there. Uh, it also gives insight into how things it, it uncovers a little bit of the abstraction of the back end, which is like, oh, hey, what's this API thing? And what other things can I call on it? And um, I'd like to just simplify that out so it's not it's not so busy. And if I were to change this after I had people using it, well, now I've broken devices that are using the service. So if a device, because this is this gets programmed, if you've watched any of the previous streams, this is the URL that you program into your firmware for it to know how to get to uh, the Deploy the Fleet update service. And so if I were to change this at all, I'm gonna break everybody's deployed devices. Um, and so that's also something I have to keep in mind going forward. Any change to this URL or the form of this URL is gonna have to be done very, very carefully because again, devices are depending on that being there. And so right now to get started and for launch, the same backend that serves up this, um, you know, the app is the same code that is going to handle device updates. And I would like to very quickly, again, I'm, I'm still proving this out and trying to find market fit and see if it's useful to people. And so I don't want to over-engineer it out of the gate. And so that's why I'm 
I'm keeping them on the same server. But very quickly, as devices start onboarding and if people like it and it starts to grow, the, the OTA service needs to be completely separate from everything else, from the website, from the app. And, uh, you know, the app's not meant to have a ton of use. That's not going to be a, a huge load because it's really, hey, when I have new firmware for a product, I'll come in here, I'll come to the firmware tab, I'll upload it. There's not a whole lot. People aren't using the app like they would, you know, a TikTok or an Instagram where lots of people are using it constantly throughout the day. It's really just there to, to be a tool for product and project makers to use and then, um, you know, their products work. So, so it shouldn't contribute a ton to the traffic, but the, the lion's share of the load on the server is going to be devices checking in, depending on how often uh, people configure their devices to check for updates. You know, they could say, Hey, every hour look for an update or every day or every week, or, you know, anytime it's plugged in, which could be, you know, weeks or months in between. But so I really want the, the OTA portion of this to be separate. The endpoint that devices hit will be separate from everything else so that it can be a standalone service that I could scale if I needed to and, and maintain separately and um, secure separately and things like that. So as part of that, let's come back to the dashboard. That was a really long explanation. Right now, I don't want it to point to the same subdomain as the app because changing that again is after release is going to be hard. It's not impossible, but I'd have to do something like, hey, any request that comes into the app for an OTA endpoint, redirect it to where I really want it hosted. And that adds latency, which I don't want to introduce and things like that. So what I'd like to do is, I guess, summarizing that, changing the URL now is possible and I can still host it on the same server. But if I were to keep the URL the same, when I want to move off the same server, it's going to be a lot harder. Whereas if I change the URL now, moving off the server shouldn't be a big deal because I'm going to use a different subdomain and then I can just use DNS records. I can go into my DNS and say, hey, uh, I think I'm going to go with something like ota.deploythefleet.io. Uh, anything that's ota.deploythefleet.io, send to this other service. Uh, that's a lot harder when they're both working from the same subdomain. Hopefully that made sense. Um, so that's what we're doing. We're going to change this so that the, the URL is a different um, subdomain and we'll get rid of the API and the OTA. So what I'm thinking of, man, sorry, I, my nose is itching. Goodness. <clears throat> what I think we'd like to do is say something like ota.deploythefleet.io slash all of this goodness over here. So we'll change the subdomain, we'll drop the API and the OTA, and then it's just, uh, it makes it shorter and it makes it easier for me to control from an infrastructure standpoint. So I don't really know how to do this. So let's figure it out together. Um, the, the biggest thing that I need to figure out is I can set up the, the DNS so that ota.deploythefleet.io points to the same server that the app is hosted on. So like right now I have a, uh, DNS setting that says anything that's app.deploythefleet.io send to this server. I can just set up uh, the same record for ota.deploythefleet.io, which will send it um, to the same server. But what I would need to do is, do I get the subdomain on the request? Surely I do. So what I'm going to do is we're using Express.js for now. And so I'm going to say express JS get subdomain value. Because what I need to do is distinguish the traffic when it comes into my express JS app. I need to say, oh, this is an OTA subdomain. So route it, you know, differently within my code. Um, yeah, but... so subdomain for each user like user one dot. a package. So this is kind of what I'm looking for. Is there not any other way than using, so we'll open this up and check it out in a minute. I was hoping it would just be part of the request object somehow. Uh, okay, this is the actual API, 4x, am I on 4x? What am I on? 
That's going to be in package JSON. Express. Okay, I am on 4x. Okay, cool. Look like subdomain was just on the page here. Subdomain. The number of dots separated parts of the host to remove to access subdomain. What is this? This is part of application settings. I don't quite understand that. The number of dot separated parts of the host to remove. An array of subdomains in the domain name of the request. Oh, yeah, this is exactly what I want. Okay, so if I do toby.ferrets.example.com, rec.subdomains will have ferrets in the, the application property subdomain offset which defaults to two is used for determining the beginning of the subdomain segments. Which defaults to two. Okay, we're gonna have to just play with this, I think. Let's see what else we've got here. Response. That's for cookies. Okay. So subdomain offset might mess with us. Rec.subdomains. Okay, so what we're gonna do is this is the backend code. Welcome to the backend code. I told you we'd look at it uh, yesterday and here we are. Um, Let's come into, oh, it's been a while since I've been in this code now. So this is the API, we don't care about that. The loaders and express is gonna be where we first come in. And this is where we're gonna say express.static, let's get through here, express.get but I have to match it. How do I make sure it matches? Well, yeah, okay, so let's do a test. Let's do app.get, and then we'll do, um, we'll, we'll just say test, that's that's easy. And then we'll do rec, which is re a request, res, which is a response. So this is all TypeScript, if you're not familiar. Oops. All right, great. And then what we'll do is we'll say response, oh, resp dot resp res. I don't know why I call it. Let's fix that right now. That's going to bother me. Res, there we go. Res dot status 200 dot end with uh, Hello. Okay, and so what we'll do, so now if we hit slash test, we should hit this endpoint and we should get hello. So let's, before we go any further, it's always, it's always a good idea before you write too much code to make sure that the, the very basic version of it works. So um, I've got this all set up to do npm run dev and it's listening on port 3000. So we'll come over here We'll say local host 3000 slash test. Okay, great. I get hello. Perfect. All right. And now what it's saying we can do is actually let's just uh, to make it easier so I don't have to switch back and forth. We'll do rec dot subdomains. And just return it like that. Save it, gotta relaunch it. And just do that. Still, oh, I'm not getting any, it's bunched up. Type, the chunk must be of type, uh, uh, did I call that wrong? Doesn't like it. 
Okay, an array of subdomains in the domain name of the request. The application property subdomain offset, which defaults to two, is used for determining the beginning of the subdomain segments. So I think we need to app set subdomain offset to one, maybe? It definitely didn't like that. Um, so just up here. Let's do app.set subdomain offset subdomain offset yeah singular we're going to set it to one and see if that makes any difference well i'll never have well i shouldn't say never i currently do not have a, a use case where i would have two subdomains so let's hit that think it's going to do the same thing. Okay. But what if I do app.localhost? Mm, it doesn't like that either. Same thing, right? Same error. Type error. The chunk argument must be of type. Okay. Instead of just guessing. Let's actually read the output. Router index, come all the way up. Server dot, oh, you know what? I think it's because I'm, maybe because it's empty. So let's do, because it needs to be a string, which it's, not let's do something like let's just do something like this json and we'll say subdomains um rec dot subdomains that might have been our only problem I think that might have been our problem. As we were trying to throw an array into the end, and it's looking, it, it wants to just output text. Okay. Logohost 3000 test. Nope, still not liking it. The chunk argument must be of type string or an instance of buffer. Did I change it in the wrong? res.json uh, I was reading that that's a uh, subdomain offset is three gonna miss oh I see no we don't want that to be one for sure reading it that way yeah okay let's get rid of that um but I still don't understand why it hates this line 44 get test and I'm saying Res.json. And I'm passing it some JSON. What am I missing? Just go back to this then. Not sure why this isn't working though. 
think. What's what's the problem? Okay, test one. Yeah. And it's an empty array. So why doesn't Why can't test be an empty array? Like why can't this just be rec dot subdomains? I don't understand why it hates that. It can. Okay, so I don't I feel like before all I had here was subdomains. Subdomains. And then like get rid of the console.log. How is this different than what I just had? Subdomains, nothing. Okay, and now if I say app dot. Ooh, subdomains is still nothing. Correct. Okay. Subdomains is still empty and it's empty here. I wonder if it's because we're doing local host. What if I do test dot? Oh, I know why. Now now it's going to be test. And the reason is because it's looking backwards like it sh it would it would normally be local host, you know, dot com. And so it, it would see the dot from com and then it would be the dot here and then it would say test app. So right now I'm going to get test. That's my prediction. And just so we don't we'll say bingo and I should get bingo back. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, this is going to be hard to test. Because so sorry if that didn't make sense. What this would normally be would this this would be app dot deploy the fleet dot io. And in that case, it can't. It's so it's saying the subdomains is set by how many dots to go back. So it's going to say one dot, two dot. Okay, the subdomains are bingo and app. And that's why app.localhost.io doesn't didn't return anything. Sorry, app.localhost didn't return anything because it was saying this is the first one. And then there is another, there isn't another one. So there's no subdomains. So the problem with that is, is that localhost.io is not going to work. I think I would need to have, I, I would have to edit my hosts file, I think, to say like anything that's dot dev. You do this at work, actually. You say dot dev. And then it can get the subdomains properly because it's looking backwards because because it's never going to get the subdomains like this testing because there's not two dots and there should be two dots so that's going to return nothing so um add dot dev to localhost I here we go. Host to file file to map site.dev to localhost. So um, I don't think I need to add a virtual host. I think just editing my host file should work. I don't know. Okay. ETC hosts pop OS dot local domain. Okay. Um actually let's do pseudo. I don't know why I can't remember the name of the text editor I like to use. It's not Vim, uh, it's nano pseudo nano hosts. Okay, so I am going to edit my hosts file. 
I can show you this. There's nothing crazy in it. 127.0.0.1. And I want to point localhost.io. I mean, I could do .com, but whatever. Localhost.io back to localhost is what that does. Um, I think that's all I need to do. And I assume I need to restart Chrome for that to take effect. Uh, at the very least, I got to open up a new tab, but I'm pretty sure I got to restart Chrome, which is going to stink because I've got everything open in it. Uh, forget that. Let's just uh, forget relaunching it for now. Let's just open up. We got other browsers we can use. Let's launch Firefox. And we'll say localhost.io. We'll do app.localhost.io, port 3000, test. Mm, it's not liking it so far. Okay, it's definitely not liking it. 3000. Um, okay. Server not found. Okay. Localhost.io. Oh, cool. Okay. So that's working now. App.localhost.io. Oh, but that's not working. We need a wild card on the subdomain. That's why. Okay. Um wildcard subdomain etc hosts i'm gonna put wildcard entry into um that i don't that's not what i'm looking for um Somebody joined. If you have any idea how to wild add a wild card for the subdomain in the etc host file, that's what I'm trying to figure out. So I want to any like any wild card domain dot localhost. I want to go back to localhost. Um, and so I'm just looking for resolve all. That's network manager. No, I just want, can I not do this in ETC hosts? And if I can't wildcard it, I can just put the, the, I can just put the actual subdomains that I know I'll be using. Use ETC host to direct wildcard domain name. Yeah, like this is, I want to do something like this, star dot, but, but it doesn't work. You need to set up a DNS server. Okay, nope. Nope, not going to go through all of that hassle. Okay, so that's that's what I need to know. So I'm not going to take that approach. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into my hosts. 
I'll bring it back over here so you can see. Uh, I actually don't know what the colon colon one. I think that's IPv6 maybe. I don't know. If you know, throw it in the throw it in the comments. Uh, so what we're gonna say is I'm gonna go one two seven zero dot zero dot one um, app dot local host dot io seven dot zero dot zero dot one OTA because that's what I'm really gonna be testing is OTA dot deploy the fleet dot io so app dot local host dot io and OTA dot local host dot io should revert back so that that should work so let's um Control exit save, yes. Let's get this out of here. Um, it's still running, so I should just be able, no, this should work now. Well, if it reloads. Ah, subdomains. App. Great, and I didn't even have to relaunch it. So is Brave smart like that too? App.localhost.io colon 3000 slash test subdomains app great and OTA should do the same thing okay so now we can test it because what we again what we're trying to do is we want to say instead of app.deploythefleet.io slash api slash OTA slash GUID I want to make this OTA.deploythefleet.io custom URL. Uh, eventually I want to make this customizable so people can change it. Um, and then I would just validate that they're globally unique. But for now, um, I'm auto assigning them. So with that working, we should be able to say, how do we make sure we want to make sure there's no overlap on. So like I've got app.use slash API is resolving. Well, yeah, so that that's OK. So what I would want to do is woo, what? I would want to just use app.use. Let's look at the docs for this. app.use bounce the specified middleware middleware function. So I could just do app.use those paths. Yes. Okay. So let's let's try and stub that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create I want it separate from the API, like completely separate from the API. So under source here, I'm going to do a new folder. I'm going to do OTA I'm going to pattern it a lot like API. So I would have a routes folder and a middleware, and I'm going to have this index that I'm just going to copy. And then under OTA, we'll do new file index.ts. I'm not going to need, obviously, all of this. I'm not going to need any of this. In fact, I'll just leave one of them to, so I can pattern match. And so, and then I'll do a new folder routes. And for now, I think I'll just take OTA routes and move it here. Are you sure you want to move it? Yes, I'm sure. Uh, update imports for OTA routes. No, I don't want to do that. Because I don't want to, I don't want to re, I don't want to repoint the imports. I want to remove the imports, and so what I will do is come into here and say OTA routes is no longer a part of this. So all of these routes right here, firmware routes, product routes, auth routes, device routes, utility routes, all of those are going to be sub routed. If that's a word, under um, loaders index. No, oh, Loaders Express, there we go. Are gonna be under slash API. So slash API slash product slash firmware slash whatever. And so what I want to do is just at the top level 
do I want to have any? Well, well, we'll worry about that in a minute. Do I want to have any um, anything after the path? So back over here, it'll be ota.deploythefleet.io slash. Do I want to have something before the grid? Like slash update that or just slash that? And I think it's just slash that. And then the, I can put a middleware in place that would just say, is this on the subdomain OTA for all routes on the OTA? And if it is, great. If not, uh, just return. I think that's the approach we'll take. So what we would do here is let's finish. So OTA routes has this app.use slash OTA, and that's not what we're going to do anymore. Okay, let's think about, let's simplify this first of all. Let's just do a test. Yeah, because see right here I'm doing app.use OTA of the route, and that's, I don't want to do that that's what made it slash API slash OTA. I just want to do app.use the route. Just return the, what do I return from here? Export default. The index returns the router. And I'm saying firmware routes router, which would be OTA routes in this case, OTA routes. Oh, and I'm passing in the router. And then I'm saying um, app.use. Okay, but I could just do it's a little convoluted. App.use, this is assigning it a new part of the path. I want to use route and then I just say route dot get get get. Um hmm. I need to think about this a little more. First of all, let's make this simpler. Let's say route dot get. Don't need to be async yet. I'll stay rec request res oops, response. Oops. And then we can just do res dot status two hundred dot end. This is working. <laughs> I always start with this is working. This we go we go we'll go we go simple. And then I wonder if I can just do this. Use forward slash. And then it'll Let's try that. Just for kicks. And that's what it's re, that's what's returned. And so back here, I'm going to say um Oh my goodness, my typing. Import OTA routes from slash routes, OTA routes, get rid of that. And then we'll say OTA routes router. So we're adding things onto the router. See, and I think I could just, so this is the router. Oh, we're returning the router because then way back up here, not in that one, not in that one. Uh, back up in, oh, express, there we go, express.ts. This API returns a router. And so for slash API, it's using a router. And then right here, I've got a router and I'm passing it into OTA routes. So I believe 
I could just do something like this app dot dot get. Yeah, I think I could just do app dot get and not worry about this at all. Let's comment that out and comment this out. So now I'm trying to just do slash the product ID. Uh, let's even just do, let's do this. This is working. And then we'll do Rec dot params there it is. Rec dot params dot product ID. Just like that. Okay. So we'll just return it back, whatever we pass as the argument. Okay. So back over here, I would say app dot use. And I wouldn't do slash API at all. I would just say I need to import from a uh, import OTA from dot dot slash OTA. I would just say app dot use OTA. Like that. Is this crazy or what? Oh, and see, I'm doing slash test. Well, it's going to evaluate them in order. So if it's not slash test, and if it's not slash version, it's not slash health. If it's anything else, it's going to resolve to this. So I should actually put this because I wanted to resolve API stuff first. Oops. Control X. Control I wanted to, yeah, be the last thing it evaluates. Okay, let's see if this all blows up. <laughs> So far, so good. Um, I think for now it'd be easiest to split screen this instead of constantly switching them. Okay, so. Hello there. This is working. Hello there. But version should still return version, yes. And API slash firmware, I don't know. Like, I think it's just ID 401. Yeah, not authorized. Yep. Okay. Cool. So, anything after. that as long as the subdomain maybe i do want it to evaluate first because it'll look for the subdomain testing this is working testing okay i think i want this to evaluate before everything okay so let's actually let's extend this now let's do new folder middleware and uh, what will we call it subdomain new file subdomain middle whoa middleware dot ts and we'll pattern that right after auth middleware so we'll say async function it doesn't need to be async expert function um i want to change the name of it off middleware uh subdomain yeah require ota sub subdomain yeah cool yeah this is gonna work i feel like we're getting there and then we just need to 
pull this logic that we had back up here in test. We can get rid of test. And what we want to do is say if uh, rec dot subdomains dot length greater than zero. No, actually, we just it needs to be equal to one, equal to one, and rec dot subdomains zero equals OTA. Next. And then I think if you don't call next, this is where I get a little fuzzy on the express. Uh, let's say advanced topics. Guide writing middleware. Next. Like, is there anything that we need to do to say, like, it's not that, so don't process it? Notice call above to next. Calling this function invokes the next middleware function in the app. The next function is not part of Node.js or Express API, but is the third argument that is passed to the middleware function. The next function could be named anything, but by convention is always named next. To avoid confusion, always use this convention. Yep, we got that. Interject throw. Next will be called with either eject value or the thrown error. So, but I'm not using Express 5. End the request response cycle. It must call next to pass control to the next middleware function. Otherwise, the request will be left hanging. OK. Um, I want it to. Uh, so maybe middleware is not what we are looking for. If you pass anything to the next function, Accept the string route or router. Express regards the current request as being an error and will skip any remaining non-error handling routing and middleware functions. So maybe middleware is not what I'm looking for. Hmm. Because what I essentially want to do is say, If the subdomain is OTA, process normally. If not, go on to whatever additional handling may exist. And that works if we leave it as the last thing. There's nothing else to handle. So I said I wanted to put it above everything and handle OTA first, that's not the case. I want to handle it last. And if it can't handle it, there's nothing else that can handle it. So we're OK to error out. Hmm. Let's see about uh, using middleware. See if there's any more interesting things that we'll learn here. stuff log method
Define error handling middleware functions the same way as other middleware functions, except with four arguments. Built in, no. Third party middleware, no. Okay, so here's an idea. Here's an idea. What we could do is instead of require OTA, so we could, what we could do here is if we don't have a subdomain, we'd error out, but that's not what we want to do. We don't want to, I don't want to force it error. So let's, let's do, let's do set subdomains. Set subdomains on request. This is probably what that subdomain uh, middleware did. Set subdomain on so set subdomains on request. And what we can do is forget all of this and just do. Well, it's already on there, so that doesn't make any sense. So we really would want to require it if we wanted. If we wanted to use the middleware, we'd want to require it. So let's not. Let's just come back over to here in OTA routes. And so, wait, what am I doing? OTA API tests, no, there we go. So right now we're saying, passing anything, whether it's the OTA endpoint or not, we're gonna return that, right? So back over here, testing. Now this could be anything. And we don't want this route to, to happen if it's not an OTA route. So if we just wrapped it in, if uh, that object that we just did, uh, oops, sorry, get rid of this again. This same logic. I don't love it, but we'll we'll do it. So right here. X V. And then like that. So we just basically gate the entire route on if there's a subdomain, it's like this one, and it equals OTA, then go ahead and process it using this handler. And so let's restart it. Just as a quick FYI, I know a lot of people set up their Node.js environments to where anytime they save a file, it relaunches. I don't like that because I am a, a, a habitual control S saver. Like I do it a lot. And so much so that whenever I've set that up, like, it just, it's restarting so much when I don't need it to. And so I don't, I've gotten into the habit of relaunching it because I know a lot of people use that so that when they make changes, they update without them having to think about it. But I, it's just habit. So if you're, if you're watching this and you're saying, Hey, why don't you have it refresh automatically? Like, that's why, like I save too much and it just churns too much down here. Um, so now this should stay like not found. Well, no, because I have OTA on there. So if I take OTA off or even change it, app dot, it's going to spin forever. Why is that? It doesn't go. That's weird. It should just say. It should be like anything. So like if I do test slash hello, it should be like, that's not found. Yeah, cannot get test hello. So what is it about this that it doesn't like? Just spinning. And if I take off the subdomain completely, same thing, spinning. 
How do I end? I believe I could just do next here. And then just say else next. I don't know. Would that work? Shooting in the dark now. Aha! Can I get... So next is just keep going. Yeah, okay. And so this yeah, so this looks like it's shaping up. App dot should give me the same thing. Cannot get, but OTA dot should work. Great. Okay. Um and I always like to do return in this. So is this how I want to approach that? Or do I want to just say, hmm. So I don't need to do app.use in this case, that's helpful. And I can, okay. I guess. I think that's a workable solution. Just save that. What have I done here? <laughs> All right, I've removed OTA routes, so that's right. I'm gonna go back to full screen here. Um, yep, that's good. OTA routes I moved, express. I'm saying, import OTA, and then I am using it. Okay. That looks good. In my index for my OTA routes, I'm saying set up OTA routes, nothing crazy there. That's nice, nice and clean. I don't need this subdomain middleware. So I can get rid of that completely. And then I just bound this into making sure the subdomain is OTA. I think I'm gonna just go with this for now. And if there is a better way to do it, I can always refactor later. The tests, I'm not even sure how to write tests for this. I'm gonna be a bad developer and punt tests on this for now. But what I can do, like I said, is we can get rid of this middleware folder. Delete. And then let's use um, I almost want to use the inverse of this. Like if we just do something like function is OTA, I think this is what I want. This isn't really middleware. Is OTA subdomain. And it will return a Boolean. And it will take the request. I've done this wrong. My, my type script is rusty boolean okay and then we'll just uh yeah we'll put this up in here and say if rec dot subdomains at length equals one and it's ota we will return true else return false Okay, and then I can get rid of this completely. And then I can uncomment out all of this. This at all just still work just exactly how it did in the other location. But instead, I'll say app.get. And the very first thing I'm going to do is if is OTA subdomain, if is not, we'll say 
not OTA subdomain. Rec. Then we'll just say next. And we have to define that up here. So next, and I have defined next in the auth middleware. What is it? Just, oh, no, I don't define it as anything. I just say next, okay. Right, next, and then I'll just call next. Uh, I think I can actually, I'd wanna return next. So it didn't try to do all of this. Yeah, I still feel like middleware is probably something that we'd want to try and use here, but I, I think this, I think this will get us done. Let's just test this really quick and then we'll call the stream because I got to I have a family commitment coming up here. Um, so now app dot localhost dot something that we don't know of should say cannot get. And this should probably return a 401 as OT. No, it won't return OTA because it's not it's not auth protected. So it should probably return a 404. 404, yes, that is exactly what I would expect it to return. And so now, last test before we call it quits is... I need to... I need to get a, a valid product. I well, no, I got. What am I doing? I uh, might as well enter it since I'm here. Um, okay, uh, I've got a the ID. So right here, let's just copy that, and then I should get a firmware. It should download ota.localhost.io, a valid update URL. Ooh, 404. Why is, oh, because it's pointing to a different, it's pointing to a different one. I need to grab, uh, standby. This is going to work. I just need a valid. ID, like say this guy right here. So it's pointing to the old database. So this should download a file. Yeah. Firmware. Firmware download. Okay, great. And then if I do anything that's not OTA on the subdomain, just like that, it's going to say cannot get. Or if I do app dot that, it's going to cannot get or anything dot. Oh, I don't know why it's taken so. Oh, there it goes. I don't know why it took so long for it to think about that. But if I do OTA dot, oh, 404, wait, did I, oh, it changed my, why did it change that? There we go, now it's downloading. Oh, it just changes it right back. It's weird. So let's paste that in and say app dot. Okay. Can't get it. Anything can oh. That's interesting. That's a cannot. 
that's weird because app. Oh, 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 I know why. I know why. <laughs> Stupid. Because I don't have host entries for any of those other things. So app and OTA are the only thing that I added uh, entries for. So that this is working right, though. It's saying it cannot get because it's not OTA. And that's exactly how I would want that to work. Okay. And then, so last thing we'll do before we move on is we'll do npm test and see what we broke. The OTA stuff's probably broken for sure. Um, Cause it's not even gonna be there anymore. Yeah, cause the, the imports are gonna be off. Yeah, see like this, get OTA slash. Um, and how do we request get? Yeah, so we'd wanna change all these. So that's that's okay, I mean, that's good. Tests failed because we made a big change and that's what we would expect. And they should all be, I would say in the OTA endpoint and it looks like they are. Yep, OTA API tests, all those fail. That's passing by pure luck, which means it could be a better test, but cool. I will fix these tests, um, but I think we're there. I think we've got the behavior we're looking for with the new OTA subdomain so that now in our product, uh, let's get this big again. Back in here, now we can say, we can get rid of this. This will shorten down to ota.deploythefleet.io slash this ID cleans out the API and the OTA and is no longer app. That allows me to move it to different services if I want. Like right now, I'll just point the OTA subdomain to the same server because we're just trying to launch and see product market fit and see if anybody's even interested in using this service. So we don't want to over engineer it. Uh, but then if the time comes where it's, it is being popular and lots of devices are connecting to it, we can pull the entire OTA service off of this server, put it on a completely separate scalable spot and redirect the OTA subdomain over to that new place. So that is going to do it for today. I appreciate, looks like one person stuck with me, whoever you are, I don't see in the chat. It was awesome to have you. I hope it was interesting. Um, maybe you found something useful or that you didn't uh, know or learn something. Uh, but uh, I hope everybody has an amazing day and Tune in again tomorrow. We're going to be doing the same thing, same time, working on Deploy the Fleet, get this thing launched.